Hello guys and welcome to this video to finally learn or review how to make a very nice inferior alveolar nerve block. As usual, I'm not going to go through theories, I'm going to go through the main key points and some very nice tips for you to ensure that you are able to do a very nice inferior alveolar nerve block. The first key point is to choose between the direct or indirect techniques but then you guys need to take into consideration which nerves you are actually targeting. Usually, if you are going to do a procedure of restorative dentistry or endo, then of course you will be targeting the inferior alveolar nerve. If you need to do a surgery or an extraction, then you also need the soft tissues, buccal and lingual soft tissues of the mandible, and those are the buccal and lingual nerve respectively. So let's see how uh, we should proceed with this. We are going to start with the direct technique, and first, I want you guys to notice that we have this anatomical landmark, which is the lingula of the mandible. So that's basically a sharp, you know, bony projection, and we actually need to deviate from this projection in order to target the inferior alveolar nerve uh, block. So we need to, to take this into consideration, and then we have the position which goes from the premolars of the other side, and then there is all the angles and everything that you guys already know. We are going to go through all the details, the penetration depth. You guys will see that it ranges from 19 to 25 millimeters approximately. And then we also need to know about the insertion points of the needle. But we are going to review everything here. Don't worry, okay? We also need to remember that, as I said, the inferior alveolar nerve goes for the teeth. And the buccal and lingual nerve will go to the soft tissues. So those are things that we also need to remember when we choose the right technique for us. What I do usually is to use direct technique when I need to do a restorative dentistry procedure or an endodontic procedure because I target directly the inferior alveolar nerve and if I need to perform a lower surgery or extraction, then I always proceed with the indirect technique and you guys will understand why. We are going to target the three main nerves in the same procedure. So now let's understand how the indirect technique works, okay? You guys have even the references of this video because they are really nice to, if you guys really want to review all the theories and everything. But for the indirect technique, the main key points are basically the ones comprised by this picture that you guys are seeing now. So the first step is to go for the buccal nerve and we need to usually to have a penetration depth in the soft tissues of five millimeters, okay? So you go parallel to the dental arch of the same side, usually one centimeter vertically distant from the occlusal line. And then you are going to use your finger to detect the bone, which is lateral to the area that you want to go. And then you insert your needle five millimeters and then you'll be targeting the buccal nerve. So the one that goes for soft tissues of the buccal area of the mandible. Then the second step is we keep going in the same direction. So we keep inserting the needle 10 more millimeters, more or less, so of course, from 12 to 15 millimeters will be the penetration depth of the needle and then we are going for the lingual nerve, all right? For those two nerves, we don't need to deviate from the lingula of the mandible, right? So it's the same direction, always parallel to the dental arch of the same side. Then you guys are going to partially remove the needle and then shift the position of the syringe towards the premolars of the other side, like this, and then you are going to lower your hand with the syringe because we want to go upwards with the needle towards the mandibular foramen. So that's the third step, which is basically the direct technique when we go directly to the inferior alveolar nerve. So of course, during the entire procedure, basically you will be releasing the anesthetic solution. You can before that use topic anesthesia. But let's see now the other key points because they will help you a lot with this procedure. And the second key point is to pinpoint the main anatomical landmarks. So I know that this sounds a little bit difficult, but I'm going to show you guys where the bone actually is, okay? So you guys are seeing the pterygomandibular raphe, and you want the, your needle lateral to the pterygomandibular raphe. Please realize that when I say lateral, I mean away from the center. When I say medial, I mean close to the center. So close to the sagittal midline, for example. Now let's understand where the bone is. I'm going to superimpose the CBCT. So the CBCT is now superimposed to the picture and take a look at this. That's why you can use your index finger to locate this bone of the mandible. So we are talking about the coronoid notch 
Then anterior to that you have the external oblique ridge and you can locate those structures with your index finger basically. And then this X in green is basically telling you about the location that you want to insert your needle. So medial to the bone and lateral to the pterygomandibular raphi or the pterygomandibular ligaments. Now let's see the key point number three, which is very important, and that's to hold and position the syringe properly, okay? One of the main aspects is for us to remember that we need to turn the bevel of the needle, so this concavity of the needle that you guys are seeing, towards the mandibular foramen. So don't forget that this is important for you to release the anesthetic material very close to the inferior alveolar nerve, which will be actually a little bit higher than the mandibular foramen itself. Also consider the reference number three if you guys want to review the techniques. You guys have actually several options of techniques, but uh, I'm talking about the ones that I use and the key points that are very important for me to achieve always a very nice inferior alveolar nerve block. And of course, the fourth key point is then to perform procedure slowly and properly. So of course, you guys will be very careful to inject the anesthetic solution. You guys can also use the topic anesthesia and we, you guys will also develop this technique to always have supports from your fingers, okay? If you are using your mirror to retract the tissues, then it's a little bit more difficult to have the support of the fingers or of the hands, but at least, of course, you decrease the risk of pinching yourself with the needle. Also, if you consider all the distances, so all the penetration depths of the needle that I am commenting here, you are going to probably realize that we need to use a long needle. So those were the key points to help you to figure out how you can develop a very nice technique to perform the inferior alveolar nerve block. Please check the references and use this video to help your studies and stay tuned for the next videos.